If you woke up chained to a pipe in a disgusting bathroom and was forced to play a death game in order to survive, could you do it? In this video, I'm going to go through the movie Saw, analyze their decisions, explain to you why that even if you made different choices that you would still end up dead. If you enjoy these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Also, tell me what movie you would like to see next down below. We start off waking up in this nasty bathtub in complete darkness. Once Dr. Gordon finds a light switch, we see that Gordon and this guy named Adam are both chained to pipes in this disgusting bathroom with what appears to be someone lying on the floor who blew their brains out. If you woke up in a situation like this, it is definitely a code brown moment. You can, for the moment, be thankful that you're still alive and seemingly unharmed, but if our friend on the floor is any indication, that may not be the case for long. After some not so useful back and forth, I went to bed in my shithole apartment and woke up in an actual shithole. They search their pockets and find tapes, a single bullet, and a key. The first thing they do is try the padlocks with a key. Of course, that doesn't work. It's not going to be that easy. After pulling the cassette recorder, Adam first listens to his tape. So are you going to watch yourself die today, Adam? Or do something about it? Adam is a photographer who is paid to follow and photograph Dr. Gordon. He is no saint, but I think there are a lot worse people we could have gone after. Next, he plays Gordon's tape. Dr. Gordon, this is your wake-up call. Every day of your working life, you have given people the news that they're going to die soon. Now you will be the cause of death. Your aim in this game is to kill Adam. So basically, Gordon has eight hours to find some way to kill Adam or his family dies and he will be left there to rot. All Adam has to do is not die before six and he wins his game. That's pretty easy. Just don't help Gordon and you should be good, right? Well, actually, no, but I'll go over that later. As for Gordon, he needs to kill Adam, which will be difficult chained to a pipe. He does have a bullet that was with his tape, so if he could get to that gun somehow, that would make matters a lot easier. But the gun is pretty far away and he doesn't have anything that he can use to help pull it to him. Gordon gets the recorder and starts listening to it, and he hears Jigsaw say, follow your heart, very quietly on the tape. They look around and see a shitty heart on the toilet. After Adam's brown water excursion, they have the bright idea to check the back of the toilet. I really wish I had checked in there first. Adam finds two hacksaws, and there are some photos that Adam took of Gordon that he neglected to share. He throws one of the saws to Gordon, which is pretty dumb. His objective of this game is to kill you, so maybe don't hand him a way out. After trying and failing to cut through the chains, Gordon comes to the realization that they're supposed to cut through their feet, not the chains. He says he knows who did it because he was under suspicion of being Jigsaw. During the flashback, there's another Jigsaw game where the person also had a cassette tape. Hello, Paul. You are a perfectly healthy, sane, middle-class male. Yet last month, you ran a straight razor across your wrist. Did you cut yourself because you truly wanted to die, or did you just want some attention? This guy just panic runs straight through the razor wire and then dies of blood loss. So the question is, is this trap survivable? Well, the short answer is, I don't know. We really don't get to see the entire maze in the movie. So can you carefully crawl through this in the two hours he gives you? Who knows? But you can't just sit and wait for someone to find you. In the movie, they say it took at least three weeks for someone to find his body. You're definitely not going to last that long. It's up to you to find your own way out. Even if you don't make it out before the door slams shut, you could still possibly get the door open or find another way out. So for this trap, I would say that it's likely survivable, unless of course Jigsaw comes back and kills you while you were banging on the door or something. He did come back to cut a puzzle piece out of his victim. Gordon says that Jigsaw wasn't really a murderer. He only found ways for his victims to kill themselves. Bro, that's just murder with extra steps. That's like cutting the brake lines on someone's car and when they plow head first into a tree, being like, I didn't kill them, the tree did. The next trap in the flashback, a guy covered in some kind of flammable substance is trapped in a room filled with broken glass on the floor with a safe in the room. There are also numbers written all over the wall. Here's what the guy's tape says. Hello, Mark. If you're so sick, then why do I have so many photos of you up and about? Let's put your so-called illness to the test. Right now, there's a slow-acting poison in your veins. The antidote is inside the safe. He killed this guy for faking an illness and skipping work. 
Really? There were no murderers or rapists that you could find? This guy really did not deserve to be burned alive. Anyways, is this trap survivable? The answer is absolutely not. He injected him with some kind of slow-acting poison. We don't know how slow the poison is. Given the time frame of his other traps, the razor wire being two hours, the bathroom game being eight hours, I would guess that he has less than a day to figure out the combination. There is enough light in the room to be able to see the numbers so you don't really need to pick up the candle, but there is no way you're going to find the combination and get the safe open. You don't know how many numbers are in the combination or how to input them into the safe. You could find the right combination and then put it in wrong and then move past them. So even if you manage to not light yourself on fire, I don't think it's possible to open the safe in time. This trap was a death sentence. The reason Gordon was a suspect is because at the second trap, they found a pen light that doctors use with Gordon's fingerprints on them. So naturally, they had to investigate him. But he gave them an alibi, which was him going to a shady motel to cheat on his wife. I did not cheat on her! Final trap in the flashback is Amanda waking up with this reverse bear trap contraption on her head. Her objective is to dig a key out of this guy's stomach. Now I know what most people think. This is the easiest trap in the Saw franchise because she doesn't have to harm herself in order to survive. She just has to dig it out of someone else. But I don't think that's accurate. I believe that this trap would most likely kill pretty much everyone put in it. Think about what you have to do. For starters, you wake up from being drugged, which would definitely have an effect on you. Then you have to run over to this guy on the floor and dig through his stomach, which I think most people would have a hard time finding. If you look at the digestive system, I would bet most of you would not have known the exact location of the stomach. So you would probably start digging around in the wrong spot. Even if you find the key, you have to unlock the lock, which is located on the back side of the trap while your hands are covered in blood, and you have to do this in under 60 seconds. I think 99% of people would die in this trap. As for the guy on the ground, he was pretty much fucked. Not really much to talk about here. Someone digging around in your guts for a key isn't going to end well for you. In another flashback to the night Gordon was abducted, his daughter was scared of someone in her closet. All he does is read her a bedtime story and then leaves. I get it, sometimes kids get scared for no reason, but you should at least take a look. This whole mess could have been avoided if he just checked the closet. Then again, the man in the closet was a guy named Zepp who did have a gun, so there's a decent chance this game ends before it even gets started. Detectives Tap and Singh figure out where one of Jigsaw's warehouses is, and instead of getting a warrant and calling in a SWAT team to raid the warehouse, they decide to go alone. We're about to find out why breaking into a guy's place who is well known for creating booby traps is a bad idea. They find a guy strapped to a chair with drills on both sides of his head. They hear someone coming up the lift, so they decide to hide and wait for Jigsaw to come out and then confront him. Jigsaw triggers the trap, and now they have to frantically figure out a way to stop it. Singh shoots the drills and it disables them, but it distracted Tap, who gets his throat slit by Jigsaw. Could have been only one movie in this franchise if he wasn't caught slipping. Singh chases after Jigsaw, which I think is a huge mistake. Best bet would be to stay with Tap and call an ambulance. I'm sure there's enough evidence in this warehouse to determine who Jigsaw is and you can just catch him later. Singh manages to shoot Jigsaw in the back while he's running down this hallway. And as he's moving forward to check his body, he triggers a trap and gets his wig split and Jigsaw gets to live to torture another day. I didn't realize this until making this video, but Gordon wasted six hours in flashbacks. So now he only has two hours to kill Adam. After looking at the picture Adam found in Gordon's wallet, he gets the idea to turn off the lights and they find a glow in the dark X. This is pretty dumb of Adam. Again, Gordon's objective in this game is to kill Adam. He should not be helping him at all. Just stall and let the time run out. Gordon finds a box that is locked and Adam throws him the key to unlock it. Another dumb move. In the box, there's a note, a cell phone, a lighter, and a couple of cigarettes. The note says, The cigarettes are harmless, I promise. Smoking is only poisonous when it ends in bloodshed. Think about this. You don't need a gun. To kill Adam. Adam actually wants to smoke the cigarettes. I don't think I need to explain why this is stupid. The phone is altered so that they can only receive calls, not make them. Of course, it's not going to be that easy. After another flashback showing how Gordon got abducted, he asked Adam how he knew to turn the lights off, and Adam shows him a picture of his kidnapped family. This is really dumb. Adam just increased his motivation to kill him tenfold. Remembering what the note said. Think about this. You don't need a gun to kill Adam. When there's that much poison in your blood, the only thing left to do is shoot yourself. 
Gordon secretly dips the cigarette in the poisonous blood on the floor. There's not a chance in hell that this would work. Adam can see everything he's doing, and putting up your hand to block the view doesn't do shit. But even if he turned off the lights with an excuse of, let's look for more clues or something, and Adam didn't see him dip the cigarette in blood, when he throws it over to him, he's going to see the blood on the end of it. But then again, Adam is borderline retarded, so who knows, it could have worked. Instead, Gordon has the idea to try and trick Zepp. He's the one who's watching over the game, by the way. He turns off the lights and whispers to Adam that he will throw him the cigarette and that he can smoke it and pretend to die from the poison and complete the game. There's a shit ton of reasons this could go wrong, like Zepp could overhear the plan, they don't know what kind of poison it is and how fast it would take effect, Zepp could walk in and check Adam's body before unlocking Gordon from his chains, and I'm sure there are many other ways this could get jacked up. In the movie, Adam has the worst performance in the history of cinema. Adam gets shocked, showing Zepp that Gordon didn't actually kill him, so this stupid plan and Adam's terrible over-the-top acting didn't work. What a shocker. <laughs> See what I did there? After the shock, Adam reveals how he got abducted. This is where Adam's stupidity really shines. He tries turning on the lights and realizes the power is out, and instead of just leaving the apartment and calling 911, he proceeds to follow around every single noise he hears using his camera flash as a light source. It's a wonder he survived this long. Once Adam is done telling his story, there's only 23 minutes left in their game. Gordon receives a call from his wife and daughter telling him not to believe Adam's lies and that he knows him. Gordon begins to waste more time confronting Adam. This back and forth is really unnecessary. His objective is to kill Adam or your family dies. That's really all he needs to know. There's more time wasting where Gordon finds out that the former Detective Tapp is the one that hired Adam to spy on Gordon. The time runs out and Gordon receives a call so he can listen to his family be killed, which is pretty messed up. According to Jigsaw's ideology, he tests those he believes are unworthy of life for one reason or another. There isn't anything to suggest that Gordon's family fits this description, especially the little girl. So I think he just enjoys watching people die horrible deaths and why most of his traps are practically impossible to escape. Ultimately, the family does survive. There was a struggle between Zepp and Gordon's wife. Then Detective Tapp comes in and forces Zepp to flee. Tapp chases after Zepp, which ultimately ends in Tapp getting shot and killed. Unfortunately, all Gordon heard was gunshots and screaming. So for all he knows, they both just got their wigs split. Gordon breaks down crying, and for some reason he gets electrocuted, which sends the phone flying out of reach so he can't answer when his wife calls back to tell them they're okay. He freaks out and begins to cut his foot off. I would wager that most people would not be able to do this. There is a movie called 127 Hours that's based on a guy that cut his arm off after getting stuck. The difference is that the people he ran into after freeing himself calls for help, Something tells me that Zepp is not going to do this. Not to mention that this shitty tourniquet that he made is not going to stop the bleeding and he would pass out from the pain or the blood loss pretty fast. I don't think he would be able to crawl out of here. And we actually see in one of the later movies that he did pass out, but Jigsaw saved him. Anyways, at this moment, Adam is pretty screwed. Gordon can now crawl over to the gun and just shoot him. There isn't much he can do here, but just dance around and hope he misses. <laughs> Zepp then comes in and tells Gordon he is too late, and just before he shoots him, Adam pulls him to the ground and beats him to death with the toilet tank lid. <laughs> Gordon tells Adam he will get help, then crawls out of the room. Adam can't really count on that. Most likely, he will crawl 20 feet and then pass out. Searching Zepp's corpse, Adam finds another cassette player revealing that Zepp was just another pawn in the game. Hello, Mr. Hendel. Or as they called you around the hospital. Zepp. Jigsaw then gets up and makes fun of Adam for letting the key go down the drain. Understandably, Adam gets pissed and tries to shoot Jigsaw, but he shocks him before he can get a shot off. And then he slams the door in Adam's face. Game over. 
That's pretty fucked up for someone who technically beat the game since his only objective was to survive until Gordon's time ran out. At the end of the day, there is really no way of getting out of here without playing Jigsaw's little game, and if Adam is any indication, even if you manage to beat it, he will just kill you anyways. Now that I went through the movie, I'm going to rate each character on the death meter. How it works is I'm going to go through the movie and look at each character's actions and see how dumb they are. I will rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the smartest character who made all the perfect decisions, and a 10 being the dumbest character who made all the worst choices imaginable. Let's start off with Detective Singh. The first mistake he made was listening to Tap and deciding to go check out one of Jigsaw's places without a warrant or any backup. I don't know how much I can fault him here though, like they didn't know for sure that this was Jigsaw's warehouse, they found it based on some graffiti in a video and a fire alarm in the background. This could have very easily been nothing, so it's reasonable not to want to call an entire SWAT team for it, but they should have just staked it out instead of rushing in there. His next mistake would be again listening to Tap and letting Jigsaw come into the warehouse instead of just grabbing him right off the elevator. Now, in hindsight, it was pretty dumb to go along with this, but in the moment, I could see most people going along with it. You only have a split second to make the decision, and your partner is urging you to do it, so I would definitely put more of the blame onto Tap here. His biggest mistake, however, is choosing to chase after Jigsaw instead of just staying with Tap and waiting for backup. But again, in the moment, I can see why he made this mistake. Your partner is telling you to go after him, and you're not wanting him to escape. After he shoots Jigsaw in the back, he moves forward with tunnel vision on him and doesn't see the trap in time, which I think is a pretty easy mistake for anyone to make. While Detective Singh made several mistakes that could have been avoided, I don't think it was like over the top stupid like some characters in movies are. I can see most people making similar mistakes like these, so for that reason, I think I will give him a 4 out of 10 on the death meter. Next, I will go over Detective Tap. Just like seeing going to check out this warehouse without staking it out first or just having some backup is a bad idea, but I put more blame on Tap here, being a senior detective and it was his idea to go in with no warrant. Once they're at the warehouse, it was also his idea to not grab him immediately and to wait and see what he does. But the worst mistake was when he has Jigsaw dead to rights and he lets himself get distracted when Singh shoots the trap and slits his throat. There were so many things he could have done to avoid this. First, they could have both grabbed his ass the second he stepped off the elevator, which would have put an end to the Saw franchise right there. Second, once they confronted him, they could have shot his ass when he stepped on the button. Let's be honest for a second here. In the real world, if you make a quick movement like that when cops have guns pointed at you, your ass is getting turned into Swiss cheese. When he has Jigsaw on his knees, he could, you know, stay out of arm's reach. But to be fair, this wouldn't necessarily have worked. They haven't searched him yet because of the trap they let him set off, so they don't know if he has a gun or not. Standing out of arm's reach obviously won't protect you from that. The main thing is to focus on your job. Singh's job was to get the victim out of the trap. Tap's job was to secure Jigsaw. All he had to do was stand there and keep an eye on him, and if he even twitches, put a slug in the back of his skull. Next time we see Tap, he's staking out Gordon's apartment. He hears gunshots, then runs in. I don't fault him too much for this one. If he sat back and waited for the cops to show up, Gordon's family would probably be dead. However, once he got inside, he had a clear view of Zepp lying on the floor, but his stormtrooper aim didn't allow him to get the kill. He also tries to take cover behind a tiny post, which I found pretty funny. As a side note, he also ran out of ammo after six shots at most. Two shots were heard while Gordon was on the phone, so it's hard to say if he or Zepp fired them off. <laughs> so he ran out of ammo after four to six shots. The only way this is possible is if he didn't fully load his clip beforehand, and I'm docking more points for that. As Tap and Zepp struggle, Zepp gets the upper hand and smashes a vase over his head. This leads to him chasing Zepp to the location where Gordon and Adam are being held. Tap catches up to Zepp, and during the struggle, Zepp shoots Tap in the chest. Well folks, this is a historical moment. For the first time ever, I'm giving someone a perfect 10 out of 10 on the death meter. Let's have a round of applause for the most incompetent detective to ever grace our screens. To justify my decision, he made pretty much every wrong choice possible, got his partner and himself killed, and allowed Jigsaw to escape. I can't think of a single time in this movie where he made the right decision. Was I too hard on Tap? Let me know down below. Next, let's take a look at Zepp. 
I want to start by saying they never actually tell us in the movie why Jigsaw chose Zepp. My guess is he used his access to steal from the hospital. Pretty shitty thing to do, but I don't think it warrants an execution. Then again, he did get off to scaring the family he just abducted. So who knows, he might be a serial killer too. Also in his tape, it says, Will you murder a mother and her child to save yourself? This just reinforces my opinion that Jigsaw is just a nut job who likes to torture people. Anyways, Jigsaw poisons Zepp and makes him oversee the game, and if Gordon fails, murders his family. His biggest mistake is listening to Jigsaw instead of going straight to the hospital. A slow-acting poison that only he has the antidote to? Yeah, right. He's a civil engineer. What the hell does he know about poisons? The hospital was his best bet, not playing this psycho's game. His next mistake was not keeping a better eye on Gordon's family. He didn't notice that the wife was able to untie the rope. Now I know a lot of people would point out that he didn't need to get that close to shoot them, but he did if he wanted to have Gordon's wife be the one to call him. Of course, he should have checked her restraints beforehand to make sure that they were still secure. Not doing so led to the scuffle that alerted Tap to come rushing in. This is probably one of the most silly gunfights I have ever seen. How do two people exchange fire within 10 feet of each other with no cover and somehow nobody gets hit? Also, after Zepp stuns Tap with the vase, at this point there was no reason to not go ahead and put a round into him. Not a lot to talk about in the final struggle between these two, it's just a fight that happens to go Zepp's way. I should say coming here is completely pointless. His objective was to kill Gordon's family once the time ran out. Once they got away, he failed. I don't think Jigsaw would give him the antidote for coming here and shooting these two. He did check Adam by kicking him, but given what happens, he clearly didn't kick him hard enough. He should have just went ahead and shot him to make sure. Zepp was pretty incompetent, so I think I will give him an 8 out of 10 on the death meter. Okay, next up is Adam. Let's start with how he got abducted. He woke up in his dark room with the power out, then follows around every strange noise he hears in his apartment using the camera flash to see. All he had to do was run out of his apartment and call the cops. He lives alone, it's not like he has a family to try and protect. Also, this doesn't really affect whether he survives the game or not, but when he was supposed to be spying on Gordon and taking pictures of him, he doesn't turn off the camera flash. I just wanted to include this to show how stupid he is. During the game, after they listen to the tape and find out that his objective is basically don't die, he probably shouldn't be helping Gordon at all. Then again, he did technically beat Jigsaw's game and he is still left there to rot, so I think he was pretty screwed from the jump. He did do a lot of dumb things, like his acting performance when he was faking being poisoned, but to be fair, this stupid plan never really had a chance at working. He didn't know what kind of poison it was, so he didn't know how long it would take to take effect. And even if he was very convincing, I think he would have gotten shocked no matter what. I really want to give him a 10 because of how dumb and impulsive he is, like wanting to smoke the cigarettes they found there. But he did accidentally sabotage Gordon a couple of times, like distracting Gordon from the game by bringing up his family. There were a couple more times he distracted Gordon from the game, so I guess I will give him a 9 out of 10 on the death meter. Finally, let's talk about Gordon. I think the only major mistake Gordon made was wasting all his time in backstories instead of just figuring out a way to kill Adam. There were some other mistakes, like not checking his daughter's closet. Zepp did have a gun, so that probably would have gotten him killed. Then again, that would go against the rules for Zepp, so if he wanted that antidote, he wouldn't be able to just shoot him the second he was found. It was his idea for Adam to fake being poisoned. He should have just done it for real. Adam is dumb enough, he probably would have fallen for it. But I can understand not wanting to kill someone. He did actually cut his foot off and shoot Adam even if it was after the time ran out. I don't think most people would have it in him to do that. I do think that this would kill him though, either from blood loss from this shitty tourniquet or some kind of infection from this nasty bathroom. As I'm writing this script thinking about how he's a doctor, it's pretty unforgivable how bad this tourniquet is. It's going to cost him a few points. So I think I will give him a 6 out of 10 on the death meter. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. Also, let me know how you would rate each character. And remember kids, if you have to go digging around a toilet filled with shit, check the back first.